The only thing left is execute store. I am not gonna explain it to you yet. Maybe I will someday. It's time. You're ready. Execute store is hashtag not like other execute subcommands. Time for a quick review. Flash execute subcommands fall into four categories. Run a command, run the command at a certain location, run the command if a condition is met, and store, which stores the result of the command into something like a scoreboard or an NBT tag. A common thing people want to do is check player coordinates. Let's say we want to get each player's Y coordinate, and then store them into a scoreboard so we can detect them easily. We'll start with slash execute as at A to run the following once for each player, then the subcommand store. Now we want to store the result, so I'll choose result, and then we pick where we want to store the data we're getting. In this case, we'll choose score at S Y level. At S is the player's username and Y level is a dummy scoreboard that I've created beforehand. That's the end of the store part. Now we can just say run, then run the command to get a player's Y level. In this case, the command to get their Y level is data get at S pause brackets one. Pause is a list tag with your X, Y, and Z coordinates in it. Pause zero is X, pause one is Y, and pause two is Z. If we run this command in our tick function or in a repeating command block, it'll store everybody's Y level in the scoreboard called Y level. Now you can detect it using execute if score. Whoop. Hey, get that out of here. Don't watch that till you're done with this video. One thing at a time, one thing at a time. Scoreboards can't store decimals, but sometimes you might wish they could. Fortunately, Mojang gave us the scale feature. At the end of a slash data command, you can choose the scale. This is just a number that the result will get multiplied by. If our Y level is 60 and the scale is 10, we would save 600. But if our Y level was 60.5, it would save as 605. Nice little trick to get more precision out of your scoreboards. Whoa, okay, there is still a lot to cover. We're gonna have to pick up the pace. What's the difference between a store result and store success? Store result stores the result of a command. Duh. I couldn't find a list of the result for every command, but for most of them, it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of commands made specifically to have useful results, like slash data get and slash time query. Store success stores one if the command runs successfully and zero if it fails. That's cool, but wait until you see this. I'm gonna blow your mind. Slash execute can be run without a run at the end. All you need is slash execute store and an if or unless statement. If the test passes, it'll store one, and if the test fails, it'll store zero. It doesn't even run a command at the end. And what if we store the result of an if statement? Oh my god, it stores the number of times the test passes. Running an if entity will count the entities and store the number. This is so much better than the way I showed in my scoreboard operation tutorial. Some of the other ifs also have results you can store. You can store the number of matching blocks with if blocks, that is, the total number of blocks in all mode, or the number of source region non-air blocks in masked mode, or the number of matching tags with if data. But where else can we store things besides scoreboards? The most powerful options are the ones that store into NBT data. Block stores data in a block, entity in an entity, and storage, well, it saves it to storage, but we'll get to that in a minute. Choosing block lets you pick the coordinates of a block you want to store NBT data in, then specify the path. The path is just the name of the tag you want to store, plus any tags it's in with like dots before it. Then you choose what kind of tag you want it to be. Note, you can only store numbers using slash execute store. That's probably its biggest limitation. This is the world if you could store strings and brackety tags with slash execute store. Our options are basically every type of number in Java and you need to make sure you get the right one. But how do you get the right one? Well, you can use slash data get to see what the tag looks like when it's in Minecraft. The letter that comes after a tag's value is the shortened form of these type names. Cool, then you get to specify the scale you want to save it at, e.g. the number your result will get multiplied by. And that's it. Entity is the same, except it asks for an entity instead of block coordinates, and storage is actually awesome. It lets you store NBT data globally. First you pass in a namespaced ID, which is like blank colon blank, just like functions, advancements, predicates, items, etc. Then you put in the path you want. You can think of the ID as being like a pair of curly brackets floating in the ether that you can put as many tags into as you want. And you can have as many of those namespaces as you want as well. No more chopping off decimals to store position in a scoreboard. Now you can store coordinates exactly as they are as doubles or as an array of doubles. I think I got more excited about that than I should have. Now we move on to the final, most aesthetic thing to store to, boss bar. My mini boss bar tutorial is thus. 
Add a boss bar with slash boss bar add name display name. And display is a text JSON, like from my Telrot tutorial. You can show it to players with slash boss bar set name players. And then you can store whatever value you like into it. For example, the health and max health of a mob. Or maybe a countdown timer from a scoreboard. That's all for slash execute store. Definitely didn't decide to make this because my first execute tutorial now has 100,000 views. Jeez, popular search terms can really get going, can't they? Subscribe if you want more moose and check out the entire slash execute command saga exclusively coming soon to Netflix or in this playlist right here. See ya!